Hey, PB here. Happy Monday. Thought I'd give you a different background as I record a word of encouragement here at home. Anybody ever uh, seen that picture before? I think a couple of you have it up in your house. It's uh, fairly well known. Good way to start each day. Over here is the little office at the house that Kelly is working on her Doctor of Ministry program and a few other things. Just thought I'd point those out. Anyway, had Psalm 23 on my heart this morning. Uh, I still have it memorized, I think, in the King James Version, although it's a bit of a hybrid at this point. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Oh my goodness. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord, and that encouraged me this morning. And I remembered something about that psalm. Did you notice the shift in the pronouns? Uh, David begins in the third person. Uh, the Lord is, he is. And then uh, midway, he shifts to thou and thy. It's as if... Uh, David, in penning that psalm, recognizes God's presence with him right there in the moment. And his psalm becomes a prayer, an acknowledgement, a conversation with God himself. And it was a reminder to me this morning that every time I open the scriptures, every time I open that Bible and begin to read, God's looking over my shoulder. He's right there with me. The God whose word and work those scriptures record is present. And uh, those scriptures are really a means to an end of knowing God more, of his uh, speaking to us and working in us and uh, using those scriptures to guide and encourage and give us hope and correct and rebuke and discipline and all the rest. And so my prayer Today is not only that you'd be in the scriptures, that you take time to open that Bible up and read it, but that you would recognize God's presence with you in that moment and recognize that that's his word. I also got to thinking about grace this morning again, and uh, that description of Jesus in John chapter one has been on my heart for a few weeks now. Uh, the word that becomes flesh lives for a while among us all describing Jesus, and then John writes, uh, he came from the Father, that'll preach right there, full of grace and truth. And I've said before that I think the order is important. Um, we need truth. We need to hear the truth. Uh, most of the truth, maybe ultimately all the truth, is gloriously good. But there's some truth uh, to uh, get to the glorious good that's hard to hear. We've got to face our need, got to face our sin, got to face our uh, human predicament. Anyway, uh, we need grace to hear that truth. And in fact, the more I thought about it, the more I realized apart from God's grace, we wouldn't be able to hear the truth. Uh, he has made truth known to us because of his grace. He didn't leave us fallen and in our sins in the garden in the beginning of time, he came and spoke truth that saves and frees. Uh, the order is important, grace and truth, not only in that sense, but uh, I think it's important for us as we speak truth, do that in love, and always grace first. Um, I pray that as we go out and about, we'll not only live by the truth, but live graciously and extend grace as we do our very best to show and tell the truth of the gospel uh, in these days. Okay, I think that's it. Um, God's with you today uh, and God bless you.